Hello, Janja community. My name is Joseph Owen, your student government president, and today I am pleased to have with me President Travis to discuss some matters that is of importance to everyone. President Travis, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. It's nice to have you. That's wonderful. I appreciate this opportunity to talk to you and our community. Welcome. Um, the first question that I have for you today is, um, last semester, the community hour was approved. To my knowledge, Janje community, Janje College in CUNY was the only CUNY college that did not have a community hour. Um, what is, for Janje students that might not know what is a community hour, can you briefly explain what is a community hour? Mm -hmm. Uh, you're right. Uh, until uh, now, John Jay was the only one of the uh, senior colleges at CUNY that did not have a community hour or a club hour or some sort of time in the day when there are no classes scheduled and when the communi community can come together around uh, projects or uh, the students can work with their faculty, uh, faculty can meet around uh, important departmental issues, uh, clubs can meet. It's really important for a community uh, like ours, where so many of our students commute, uh, where we're jam-packed into a small space and we have uh, a full day and a long day, it's really important for us to have a time in the day when we say that we want to promote uh, people working together and coming together and just hanging out together. It creates community. That's why we're calling it uh, Community Hour. So this is the first time in John Jay's history that we'll have uh, a Community Hour. And it'll come at the same time as the opening of the new building. So the new building with the jaywalk and the places to hang out, sit on the benches and the, uh, sit on the lawn, uh, that new space will also have a new uh, architecture to the day. Uh, between 1.40 in the afternoon and 2.40 in the afternoon, there'll be no classes scheduled. And that'll be our community hour. And it's going to make uh, John Jay a, a much richer uh, place in terms of our ability to relate to each other and work on uh, on projects together, both for faculty and for students. Um, I think you sort of um, touched on my next question, which mm -hmm. is now that we have a community hour, how, what impact do you think it will have at the college, especially as, we, as we're about to expand into the new building? Well, I think every um, student organization on campus and every uh, group of faculty or academic department uh, has experienced the problem of trying to schedule something at a time when people can make uh, a meeting or uh, some sort of uh, activity. Uh, you always find that somebody's teaching, so somebody's in class, or they have some other commitment. And uh, that means that it's hard for us to do the work that communities do, which is to work together. There's always somebody, it's, it feels like uh, to me, who can't make it. Mm -hmm. You've had that experience. Yeah. And it's very frustrating. So uh, the community hour will become the time and the day when we say uh, we're doing work to better our, our community. And we had to move uh, the schedule around a bit. We moved the schedule up a bit, so our first class will now start at 8. Uh, there was another benefit here, which is that our seventh period will now start at uh, 540. So that will give students who are working a chance to come from work if their work ends around 5. Uh, but we still are ensuring that our last class will end at 945. So uh, students who are here at night will be able to get home uh, on the subway or, or by car. So we're moving the schedule a little bit to create this time in the middle of the day. And what this means is that a student club that wants to have a meeting will just say, let's meet during community hour and pick a room, rather than try to figure out who's available. It's going to be uh, transformative. Wow, sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, my next question is, as President Travis, as you know, um, February is designated as um, Black History Month. Mm -hmm. For me, I think uh, it is a month that we uh, celebrate the accomplishments, the sacrifice, mm -hmm. and the um, more of the contributions of Afri African Americans to this country. Mm -hmm. um, President Travis, what does um, this celebration mean to you? Well, it means a lot to me uh, as, a, as an individual, and I'll talk about that in a second, but it's also very important to our college. Um, we have a number of events that we schedule during uh, Black History Month. Uh, we have the annual Lloyd Seeley Lecture, uh, which is a lecture uh, in the name of Lloyd Seeley, who uh, was a professor here and was the first African-American uh, to be appointed to the rank of assistant chief uh, in the NYPD. Um, and this year, we always have a prominent speaker. This year we had uh, Chief McClelland, who's the police chief uh, uh, in Houston, came and gave a talk. So that's, a, that's an important uh, event in our annual calendar. We co-sponsor that with Noble, the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives. We also have uh, Malcolm King Breakfast, which is coming up uh, soon. Uh, Derek Bell, a very prominent law professor, and Faith Ringgold, a very prominent uh, artist, uh, are the honorees. 
Uh, that's another chance for our community to come together. Uh, so Black History Month is important uh, to me personally uh, because it, as, as an American, uh, we have a very, um, we have to recognize we have a very tragic history. Uh, uh, slavery is, uh, is a, a stain upon our, our nation's history and uh, we should, uh, in my view, uh, make uh, conscious efforts every day uh, to try to uh, advance the goal of a pluralistic, uh, multicultural uh, society uh, here in this country. And so Black History Month is an opportunity to recognize the accomplishments uh, of uh, African Americans, but also to reflect on the, on the struggle, on the journey uh, traveled, uh, and to uh, remember that, uh, that the progress we've made is, uh, didn't come easy, uh, lives were lost, uh, we fought a civil war uh, to abolish slavery, uh, but also to recognize that we, have, we still have a distance yet to travel. Okay. Um, my next question is, um, I believe um, one of the, the most prominent thing or the most prominent issue, I believe that some African Americans um, actually tried to tackle was to fight for the, um, the civil rights of minorities. Mm -hmm. First of all, President Travis, I must commend you for the level of diversity that exists at the college, both in the faculty mm -hmm. and the student body. Mm -hmm. um, my question is, um, why do you think it is important to have diversity at any higher institution? Mm -hmm. Well, first, I, I accept your compliment on behalf of, of the college, but it's, it is a, a, a great strength of John Jay that we have the level of diversity we have both in faculty and, and students. Uh, compared to all of the senior colleges within CUNY, we are the most diverse in terms of race and, and ethnicity. So about 42% of our undergraduates are uh, Hispanic, about 25% African American, uh, about 10% uh, Asian, a quarter to a third of our students are born in another country mm -hmm. and have come here, you know this experience. <laughs> So this, this uh, means that we, we are an institution that is, is more than two-thirds uh, uh, minority students. The cultural um, benefits, the educational benefits, the intellectual benefits uh, that come from uh, being in a community where so many different perspectives are represented and when every day you're challenged to question your own identity and think about how do you get along with other people different from you. Uh, that makes us a very lively and a very strong uh, institution. We are modeling what uh, the future is going to look like in our city and, our, and in our country and, and in the world. This is preparing our students to go into a world where uh, there are many cultures, where the globe is the, uh, is the community that we talk about, uh, and where uh, cultural competency, the ability to get along uh, and understand and, uh, and respect others, uh, will be a key factor in uh, professional and, uh, and academic and, per and personal success. So I like to think of John Jay as this microcosm mm -hmm. of, of, of the future. Wow. And President Travis, my last question for you today is, um, actually I did a, a, a little research for this question. Um, I observed or did a, a research and it revealed that you actually have um, done a lot of um, extensive research on the prison reform and you actually committed to um, what is known as recidivism. Mm -hmm. For the John Jay students or faculty in general who might not know what is recidivism, mm -hmm. can you briefly explain to them what it is? And also, the, the looking at the current um, prison system in the United States, how do you think it impacts the minority um, communities? Mm -hmm. Big question, Joseph. Uh, and yes, this is my personal um, interest, uh, scholarly interest is in uh, uh, prisons and, and particularly the, the issue of what we call prisoner reentry and reintegration, how do uh, people who have uh, spent time in prison, how are they uh, accepted back or not accepted back uh, into society. Uh, so the, the historical perspective here that's relevant is that uh, this country now has the highest rate of imprisonment, of incarceration of uh, any country in the world. And uh, we long ago surpassed Russia and South Africa and other countries. Wow. And we have more than quadrupled the rate of incarceration uh, over the last generation. So this significant increase in uh, the number of people in prison has consequences for our society, deep, profound, long-lasting consequences. And uh, the area of uh, research that's been of greatest interest to me in the last uh, uh, 10 or 15 years has been this question of the impact of that high rate of incarceration upon our our society. And one measure is, of course, recidivism. You know, are people getting rearrested or not? 
uh, and at what rates and can we improve those outcomes and that's a very important goal. Mm -hmm. uh, but the larger question is a question not of recidivism but of reintegration. Um, how do we uh, adopt uh, our, our sort of society uh, or adapt our society to this reality of high rates of incarceration? And the overarching policy challenge and political challenge is to reverse the high rates of incarceration and mm -hmm. try to figure out, which I know we can do, uh, other countries have done it, mm -hmm. how we can address issues of crime without putting so many people in prison. Mm -hmm. and there's no reason that we have to have so many people in prison in this country. Mm -hmm. And the consequences, just to follow up on your question, the consequences for the uh, nation's pursuit of racial justice mm -hmm. are really deep because the uh, the consequences of incarceration, the impact of incarceration is felt most acutely in urban areas, urban communities of color, mm -hmm. so that uh, we have high rates of incarceration, particularly among men, uh, African American and uh, Latino men. Mm -hmm. And so th the intersection of race and reintegration mm -hmm. and punishment is a very profound set of uh, interlocking uh, moral questions and policy questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, that uh, I've committed a good part of my life to, and uh, I think it's one of the most important questions facing our country. I think uh, this is more of like a follow-up. So w what would you suggest uh, would be like a, a, a policy more of like to, um, to, to tackle this um, issue, this present issue? Well, the, if, if the first goal is to reduce the number of people we send to prison, mm -hmm. we have to reform our sentencing practices so we don't use punishment, meaning incarceration, as a sort of a default response to, to, uh, to crime. Mm -hmm. We need to shorten sentences. We put people in prison for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, we have prisons around the country that are now geriatric prisons with people on uh, kidney dialysis machines who are dying of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in large numbers. Uh, but more profoundly, we need to think differently about crime and how to interact with crime and how to prevent crime. Mm -hmm. uh, crime is a very serious problem in this country. We have yes. high rates of crime and violence. Uh, but we don't need to put a lot of people in prison to, in order to respond to them uh, mm -hmm. better. So here at John Jay, those are very robust discussions. Professor Kennedy is thinking about crime prevention. Uh, Professor Horn has just been named the executive director of the Sentencing Commission mm -hmm. for New York State. Uh, uh, we have other professors who are looking at issues of incarceration and community effects. So John Jay is, is a thought leader in, uh, on, on these issues, and I'm very proud to be here at this time. Wow. President Travis? Like always, I uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to mm -hmm. discuss matters uh, that are of importance to the Janja community. Thank Great. you. You're very welcome. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, once again, Janja community, I, I thank you for tuning in, and I ask you to stay informed.